Hello everybody and welcome to our second class video about trigonometry. Our learning goal for this video is that we will be able to find the measure of an unknown angle in a right triangle using trigonometry. For the, in the last video, we found the measure of an unknown side. If you haven't watched the first video yet, make sure you do that so that you can see get some of the basics of trigonometry that I talked about. Okay, so let's also give you a very important reminder that your calculator must be in degree mode. That's what I said in the last video. Okay, the calculator defaults to radians, so to change it to degree mode, make sure you push mode and then change it to degrees. Okay, so let's start off with an example. Let's find the measure of an angle inside our good old friend, the 512-13 triangle. Okay, so the steps for finding an unknown angle in a right triangle are actually very similar to the steps to find an unknown side. Okay, the first step is just to label the sides. So the 5 is the opposite because it's across from my angle, which is x. The 12 is the adjacent because it's next to it. The other side is the hypotenuse, but it doesn't have a label on it, so I'm not going to use it. Okay, we could use it because we know it's 13, but let's just focus on the 5 and the 12. Okay, so then second step is still the same. Pick an appropriate trig function. For this problem, I have the opposite and the adjacent. So what part of SOHCAHTOA is that? That's the TOA part. So that means my trig function for this problem is the tangent. Tangent of theta equals the opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so third step, fill in the equation. Hey, it's all still the same. Okay, so my angle is x, so instead of theta, I'll write x. The opposite is 5, and the adjacent is 12. So I have tangent of x equals 5 over 12. Here's where it changes. The fourth step is different we will apply the inverse trig function to find the measure of the angle. So, what is an inverse trig function? Okay, so an inverse trig function works in reverse. It tells you the angle that created that specific trig value. Okay, so, or as I just said, it's the trig function working in reverse. Okay, so you write these as sine minus 1, cosine minus 1, or tangent minus 1. But even though it looks like that, the, in, the minus 1 is not an exponent. Okay? It signifies that it's an inverse. And you say it as sine inverse or inverse sine, or inverse cosine, or inverse tangent, or whatever it is. The minus 1 means the inverse. Okay, you get these functions by using the second button on your TI calculator, then pushing the sine button, okay? Or second, then cosine, or second, then tangent. Okay, so these inverse functions will undo the working of the other trig function. Okay, so let me show you. It'll make more sense when you, when you apply it to the example. Okay, here's, so here's our example that we already had, okay? So... I'm going to use the inverse tangent because I have the tangent function in this case. I will take the inverse tangent of both sides. The inverse tangent undoes the tangent. So the tangent inverse and tangent cancel, leaving me with just x on that side. Okay? The whole tangent inverse was created so that we can undo the tangent function. Okay? So then on the right hand side I have tangent inverse of 5 over 12. The tangent inverse will tell me what angle will have a tangent of 5 over 12. Okay, so if I clear off a little room here, you use the calculator, type in second then tangent to get tangent inverse, and then type 5 over 12. In this case, that gives me a value of 22.62 degrees. Okay, so my angle in that triangle is 22.62 degrees. This also tells me the measure of the other angle because I know the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180. Or the, since it's a right triangle, the two remaining angles have to add up to 90. 
Okay. So, to help you get the point, let's do, walk through one more example. Once again, we'll find the value of x, which is an angle. Here's our triangle. We've got a side of 4 and a side of 20. I'll go ahead and write out the steps here again so that you can reference them. You already got them written down, but that way you can look at it while I'm applying them. Okay, so the first step is to label the sides. The 4 is the opposite because it's across from the angle. Which one is the 20? It's across from the right angle, so that means it's the hypotenuse. We don't care about the other side because we don't have any information about it. Okay, so I only need to pick the appropriate trig function, and the sides I have are the opposite and the hypotenuse. So what part of Sokotoa is that? Oh, that's the so part, S-O-H. So that means my function is going to be sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Next, I'll fill in the equation in step 3. The angle is x, the opposite is 4, and the hypotenuse is 20. So I have the sine of x equals 4 over 20. I need to know what angle will have a sine that comes out to be 4 over 20. This is where the inverse trig function comes in. So I'll do the inverse sine of both sides. Sine inverse and sine cancel each other, leaving me with just x on the left side. Then I could use my calculator to figure out what sine inverse of 4 over 20 is. The calculator tells me that the sine inverse of 4 over 20 is 11.5369 blah blah blah. Okay, so let's round it to 11.54. Okay, so the measure of my angle x is 11.54 degrees. That's a small angle, which we would anticipate because the 4 is very short and the 20 is very long. Okay, so there you have it. If you have any questions, I can help answer them in class. Alright, see you guys later.